uh, we have another transfer function uh, the loop gain g of s into h of s is given by this relation and procedure uh, to apply Nyquist criteria to uh, study the closed loop stability is to map this uh, contour into gh plane however over here we have a difficulty there one pole of the open loop system is at origin so if you will substitute this point omega equal to 0 over here what you will get you will get infinity so therefore you will not uh, be able to count the number of encirclements because the graph reaches infinity in an undetermined way so how to handle this particular situation what do you think the problem is clear here the open loop system open loop transfer function this loop gain has one open loop pole at origin and if we find the mapping of this contour so corresponding to this point we shall obtain infinity and that is the Nyquist plot will go to infinity in an undetermined way and we shall not be able to count the number of encirclements and hence we shall not be able to determine the stability of closed loop system so here is the idea we slightly change the contour our closed path we slightly change it we make a small semicircle over here this small semicircle is called detour and its radius approaches zero so we make this small semicircle with radius approaching zero so what we can see is that again uh, this uh, uh, this closed path this contour encompasses the whole right half s plane because radius of this semicircle is approaching zero and radius of this bigger semicircle that is infinity so uh, this uh, uh, closed path encompasses the whole uh, right half s plane so our all our analysis which we performed earlier is still applicable the only difference is that now we have a new contour and we have to learn how to obtain its mapping so mapping of this contour is uh, also uh, simple uh, so what we do is we start with the mapping of this uh, positive imaginary axis and now frequencies uh, do not start from zero these start from frequencies uh, zero plus slightly uh, larger frequency than zero and uh, for that purpose g of j omega into h of j omega is given over here as uh, this frequency approaches uh, this uh, zero plus that is frequency slightly larger than zero what will be the situation two plus zero its magnitude j j zero uh, that is uh, uh, magnitude is infinity and angle of this complex number is minus 90 degrees 1 over j multiplied by uh, small number so its uh, angle is minus 90 degrees so where is this point mapped in this gh plane infinity angle minus 90 degrees so where is that point so on this uh, downwards and at uh, infinity in other point as omega approaches zero uh, omega approaches infinity we have this point zero angle minus 180 degrees so here uh, this minus 90 will be due to this term and minus 90 degrees will be due, due to this term so minus 180 degrees and magnitude one divided by infinity that is zero so we have two points uh, one over here and the second over here uh, we can determine a few more points determine the crossing on the real axis and, and uh, the imaginary axis for that purpose we simply rationalize it multiply it uh, with the, the complex conjugate and after multiplication we have this thing and uh, substituting the real part of this thing equal to zero uh, we get uh, omega equal to infinity we have already uh, learned uh, the mapping of omega equal to infinity that was uh, mapped to origin and uh, and what about crossing on the uh, real axis to find the crossing on the real axis we shall substitute the imaginary part to be equal to zero and corresponding to uh, that thing if we substitute imaginary part equal to zero you again get 
omega equal to infinity and we have already learned how to obtain the mapping uh, for uh, corresponding to those points. Uh, so we have this mapping for the this positive imaginary axis for this uh, bigger semicircle what we shall do we shall uh, uh, this uh, equation s equal to r e raised power j theta that describes this bigger semicircle we have simply substituted s equal to r e raised to the power j theta over here and we have 1 divided by this thing uh, multiplied by uh, this thing so 2 can be ignored over here and uh, 1 divided by r r is it tends to infinity 1 divided by infinity is 0 and angle is minus 2 theta theta is uh, minus theta is angle due to this term and minus theta is angle due to this term so we have uh, mapping of this uh, entire semicircle that is mapped to this single point 0 angle uh, minus uh, 2 theta that is there is a vector with the length 0 and which rotates from an angle of uh, minus pi to pi so next comes the mapping of uh, the uh, negative uh, imaginary axis for the negative uh, imaginary axis the mapping is just mirror image of this one uh, which is indicated over here and now we are only left with the mapping of this small semicircle so how should we obtain the mapping of this small semicircle same procedure as we did for bigger semicircle uh, this small semicircle can also be represented by uh, this uh, s equal to epsilon j phi where epsilon approaches 0 and what about phi phi changes from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 so if we substitute this thing uh, uh, s equal to epsilon j phi over here we have uh, this relation so uh, this uh, uh, this epsilon approaches uh, to 0 so, therefore over here we can just ignore this term so 2 multiplied by this epsilon e raised to the power j phi so that becomes 1 uh, divided by 2 multiplied by epsilon and what about phase angle phase angle of this complex number is phi and when written in the numerator it becomes minus phi so this small semicircle mapping is represented over here uh, so what about phi phi varies from minus pi to pi so what do you think what should be the mapping of this small semicircle in this gh plane what do you think For example, uh, where is this point mapped? J is uh, this point. This point corresponds to epsilon angle minus pi by 2. So magnitude is infinity and angle equal to pi by 2. Here is minus phi. So this point is mapped over here, somewhere over here at infinity with an angle of plus 90 degrees what about this point uh, this point this is also uh, infinity and angle angle how much angle uh, what is angle of this point zero degrees phi is equal to zero over here and what is the angle of this complex number minus zero which is also zero so this point is uh, mapped uh, on this real axis at somewhere at infinity so mapping of this point is over here mapping of this point is somewhere on the real axis at infinity and then mapping of this point is uh, again at infinity but with an angle of minus uh, 90 degrees uh, here angle is plus 90 so here angle should be minus 90 so that point is mapped over here this uh, this is the mapping of small semicircle so once we have the nyquist plot uh, the rest of the things are as usual 
uh, we apply uh, this uh, expression. So, how many poles of this uh, system open loop transfer function are in the right half S plane? Uh, no pole. And uh, how many encirclements? Encirclements of this point, minus 1. There is no encirclement. So, n is equal to 0 and p is also equal to 0 and which implies that z is equal to 0 and that means that the closed loop system is stable. Uh, you will repeat all this procedure for this system. Uh, again, this uh, system has one open loop pole at origin. Therefore, you will make a detour uh, over here. And remember that for such transfer functions, MATLAB cannot, will not be, you, you will not be able to utilize MATLAB to obtain the Nyquist plot for transfer functions which have uh, poles on the imaginary axis. So you will have to uh, depend upon your hand calculations. The open loop poles of the system are over here. One is at origin, two poles are in the left half S plane and uh, uh, the mapping procedure consists of mapping of this imaginary axis. So all the procedure you already know uh, determine the mapping of omega equal to 0 plus you have this point for omega approaching infinity you have this point and you determine the crossing of the real axis and imaginary axis. So you have these uh, three points uh, corresponding to omega equal to 0, omega equal to square root of 2 and omega equal to infinity. So mapping of the positive imaginary axis is this one and uh, for this bigger semicircle as usual it will be mapped to a single point uh, at origin and uh, for this negative imaginary axis it will be a mirror image of this one so and for this uh, smaller semicircle we replace s with uh, epsilon e raised to the power j phi and uh, this epsilon uh, is very small number this is very small number so you can ignore this term and this term so you have 2 divided by 2 multiplied by epsilon e raised to the power j phi and uh, which is uh, 1 divided by epsilon e raised to the power j phi again a typo here we have written uh, the angle over here so e raised to the power j phi we should not write it uh, over here and uh, then uh, what will be mapping of this uh, semicircle, small semicircle? Similar to previous example, you will get another big circle uh, that is shown over here. And what about stability of the closed loop system? So uh, you are right. Uh, so number of encirclements, you have two encirclements, P is equal to zero. So z comes out to be equal to 2 and hence the closed loop system is uh, unstable. So this is your homework. You have to sketch uh, the Nyquist plot for this transfer function that is shown over here and uh, you need to count the number of encirclements and then uh, determine the stability of the closed loop system. That is your homework. You have to do it at your home. So next uh, lecture will address one question that was raised from the class that how does this Nyquist uh, uh, criterion help to determine degree of stability that is how to uh, determine the relative stability uh, we shall discuss it in the next lecture inshallah.